Hello and welcome once again. Welcome to the my session of the protector. And today we will be learning how you can use the logging functionality in protector. So in protector, the test execution will be logged in a log file. And our main aim is to create those log file programmatically so that all of all the execution flow, we can easily debug at the time of debugging where the code got stuck or what was the issue happened. And it will be helpful for also debugging as a programmatically when and where the execution got blocked. So to run this logging, we will use the log4j and uh, we will learn today how you can configure the log4j so that it will behave as expected and it will create a log file for you so the first thing is that i will go to a npm website and in the search package i will write log4j log4js and uh, I will write the log4js and I will copy this one in pmi log4js and in the console I will paste it and give it a run. It will install all the packages in the log4j and also the second thing we will be using log4js appender. We will similarly go to the npn website and we will use log4js appender protector which will refine our result so we will use this one log4js appender log4js protector appender we will click it copy it and i will paste it in the console and we will wait for the package download to get completed once it is complete we will verify whether the download has occurred correctly or not we will go to the node modules and inside that we will have a log4js folder and a log4js protector appender. So all those files are present and the package is ready and we can execute using this package. The next thing that you need is the test case. In the test case, this is our original test case we had used inside that we will use couple of lines so that the log get generated. So we will use full screen.js as our test case and we will use the log here. The third thing that you need to do is that create a folder named util and inside that util you have to write a helper.js. Whatever written in helper.js has been provided in the description box you can go and copy from there. And uh, I have, I will give you a basic idea of that. The thing is that helper.js will create a file, right? It will create a file as in the appenders, we have written file and its type should be file and the file name is given, right? You can also use the relative path, absolute path, whatever you of your choice. And in the categories, we will use the div level of this debug and the appender will be the file so which file we have created okay and in the export module.exports we are exporting log4js gen so this log4js gen will be required in our test cases we will create a log4js and gen and we will use that helper class which is present so we will require that helper class in the execution and using this variable log4js gen we will use log4js gen dot get logger dot info because this is an information level and we will write browser launch right also we will write the log for js gen dot get logger info is browser closed so practically we will open the browser and we will close the browser so these two messages should be present in the log file and also you can check in the helper dot js we have a udemy protector code then log and file.log so the file extension will be .log and it should be present in the logs folder but we will we don't have any logs folder here so this folder will be automatically created in the runtime and a file.log file will also be created and in the file.log all the log messages will be automatically printed 
first three things. The first thing is that we have done npm i log4js, which will download all the packages inside the log4js. We will then use log4js protector appender. Once we have done, we have done with these two. We will come back to the editor. We will create a util folder and inside the util folder, we will create a helper.js. This helper.js will be used to create the log file mainly. And also this helper.js is nothing but the heart of the log4js configurational file. It is mainly the configurational file. We can do lot of configuration inside the log4js. And once we have done with the configuration, we will come back to the test case. With the test case, we will just sort of import the single line where log4js gen required the helper class folder path. That is the helper class we have created. This helper.js and then we will write log4js dot get logger dot info. And we will give the information, whatever information we want to print. Now the next thing that we have, we will run this. We will use npm test to run this. Once we've done the npm test, our execution will start. See our execution has started. Execution is complete. Now the allo report is getting generated automatically in the folder and also the log is also generated right so we will check whether the log folder is there or not yes the logs folder is now present we will click on that we will click on file.log and we will see that the browser is launched and here it is called browser closed and the timestamp and everything and the information level what is the level of the log message okay so this is how we can generate the log message and also one thing I have written is that console.log this console.log is nothing but this console.log is used to print inside this console see result in console.log is this line is printed so whatever we will write inside the console.log this will be printed not in the log file it will be printed directly to the console okay and whatever we will write in log 4 jngetloggerinfo it will be directly printed in the file.log so the three things we have done that is installation of log4js package uh, then with the installation of log4js protector appender then creating a helper.js dot, helper dot file which is nothing but the configurational changes and next is the full screen which is the test case we will require this and we can extend this variable and use this. So that's okay for today and we will come back once again with another new session of Protector. Bye-bye.